Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Agent Sedge. My name is Ryan Palomini. Today we have a very special guest speaker. I'm actually really excited about this interview. This is my business partner, Brian Stone. He's also our chief investment officer here at our firm. And, uh, and Brian and I, we, we have a pretty funny story. We've actually known each other for over a decade, kind of right when he started selling insurance. I met him and about a year later, I ended up sell started selling insurance. We met, uh, literally going to a job at a restaurant that we both hated in the same location. We're both from Connecticut and we met each other on a bus heading to the casino, getting ready to go to work for the night, both miserable, both trying to pitch each other on a different uh, business opportunity, ended up on the same path. But uh, so I'm actually really excited about this because a lot of history and uh, the progression of where we are today is really, it's really exciting. But you know, when I think of Brian Stone, one of the reasons why I really wanted to have Brian a part of this and be on this interview is simply because he is a shining example of progression in the financial world. And I'm going to talk a lot about that, but you know, when I met Brian, we were slinging mortgage protection, final expense, probably like a lot of you watching this. And that progression over a 12 year, 13 year period of time, he's now a full service wealth manager. I mean, literally, fiduciary, uh, you know, assets under management, building a massive book of business. But we started in final expense mortgage protection. I can probably say we never thought that, that I know you never thought you'd probably be here where we are today. So uh, with that, Brian, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Brian Stone, everybody. Uh, happy to have you on today, man. Thanks for taking the time. No, nah, man. I uh, pr uh, appreciate it, Ryan. Uh, you know, like you said, my name is Brian Stone, Chief Investment Officer here at our uh, practice, Palomini Tax and Financial Group. And, um, you know, like Ryan said, I I've known Ryan 10 plus years now. Uh, you know, maybe one day we can get into the, the complete story. But, <laughs> but yeah, you know, we met and, uh, you know, and he was trying to do his deal with, uh, with another business. I was just starting uh, in the insurance business and, uh, you know, just trying to figure it out. You know, like Ryan said, maybe a lot of you out there today are trying to figure it out. And, um, you know, through uh, you know, going through the trenches together in yep. the uh, mortgage protection and, and final expense business and having a lot of success. Yeah. You know, me and Ryan had a lot of success in that business and then, you know, having a lot of failures and, and um, you know, me and him just, you know, we got together back in, you know, 2017, yeah. I believe it was, uh, when Ryan had found, uh, you know, the the niche market and with the federal employees, which I'm sure he's probably talked about on this show. And, and uh, you, you know, he basically asked me if I wanted to, you know, be a, come, come aboard and, and really just be a part of uh, working in that niche market. And, uh, and since then, Ryan, you know, we became business partners and uh, through a lot of trials and tribulations, man, we're, we're still standing today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'm uh, truly honored and blessed to be on, on the call today and, and uh, glad to call you, you know, my business partner, man. And, um, and yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because we, we look back from 2017, you know, I talk a lot on this show about why you need to find a niche. But the progression, like even when you and I started Top Rank Advisors, that didn't just happen because we were like, hey, we've got this great idea, let's do it. Yeah. That was, I went out, like you said, found the niche market that we're in, tested it for a year. Then I called you up and I remember you traveled uh, for almost two months just watching me kind of go through some of them. Then you took some appointments on your own. And then six months later, we started Top Rank Advisors. That's how we were able to scale that thing from zero to 20 million in 18 months. And I, you know, a lot of people, they don't really see that. You know, we, like there was a long time between now and then. But the progression that you go through, I want to talk about you today because, you know, for the lot of people watching, Brian, that are in final expense mortgage protection, you know, I know you and I, we talked about this a lot. We never saw the path to becoming a wealth manager, nor do we even f find a reason why we would want to be. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is, is if you could talk a little about that progression, right? Because you handle all of the wealth management in our office. I do a lot of the tax planning, a lot, you know, on that side of it. And we, that's why we work really well together because we pass it off to each other. But, you know, what was the desire to be in wealth management? Why did you end up progressively getting to that path? What was it that, you know, for somebody watching going, I'm selling final expense mortgage protection. I don't ever want to do that like we thought. But as our prog as our business progressed, it was a necessity. But talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, Ryan, it was more, uh, you know, let's just go back, I don't know, seven, 10 years ago when I was out there running 20, 25 appointments a week. 
selling ten thousand dollars a week in, in life insurance and um you know i went from building teams to not building teams and and honestly that got kind of exhausting yeah. uh you know out there um you know putting 50 60 000 miles on my car each year <laughs> you know working six seven days a week you know making a good living but you know it's 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 a tough living as well and um you, you know but what always attracted me to uh the financial side of our business is, is more just being able to get in front of uh higher net worth people and just working smarter right yeah. so if you can make the same amount of income that you're making and more but work less and or just maybe smarter uh, to me, that was attractive, sure. uh, you, you know, just working smarter in that sense. So it was never something that I saw myself doing. Uh, but as, you know, we got into the niche market with working with federal employees and, you know, just finding, you know, how can I add more value to my business? You know, I'm doing strictly insurance now. But right. what if I did insurance and I did investments as well, you know, offered up another service for my clients. So initially I saw it really just as that, mm -hmm. you know, opening it up another service to my client, maybe similar how some agents may do, Ryan, if they're selling mortgage protection uh, and final expense, and maybe they open up Medicare sure. to, to their practice. Um, you, you know, and I also thought about that. And as you know, I kind of dabbled around with that, but I, I, I thought more, how can I get in front of higher net worth individuals? Yeah. Uh, how can I, you know, possibly, you know, increase my volume, my productivity? And what, the way I saw it was through wealth management, through investments, ad adding another service. I never saw it, uh, you know, progressing to the point we are at today. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, with the volume that we're doing, the cl type of clientele that we have. But that's kind of what what I saw, and it, it kind of the pieces just really fell together really sure. on that part. Sure. So let me ask you this then. Because uh, a lot of people watching this, you know, everybody wants to learn how to do big annuity sales, big IUL sales, big whole life cases, right? Tell us, because I see it on a daily basis, but what has the wealth management side actually done for that side of your business too? Uh, it's it, It's been night and day, man. I, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing with uh, being someone's financial advisor, someone's fiduciary, working in the wealth management side has been that now you're that trusted advisor. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you probably hear that a lot. Uh, you know, some some people will say someone's tax professional right. is their trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. Someone's estate planning attorney. Uh, same thing goes with someone's financial advisor. And that's typically the most trusted advisor you're going to have, right? Because they're in control of your finances. Yeah. And, and so for me, the the other part of our business, the insurance side, the annuities, uh, the big IUL cases, the whole life cases, the long term care, things like that, that's made that side of my business a lot easier because mm -hmm. now they're not getting it from an insurance agent's perspective. Sure. Right. Because if you're if the client's getting it from an insurance agent's perspective, well, they think, well, he's an insurance agent. Mm -hmm. he's, he's trying to sell right. me something. But when they get the insurance side, which there's there's a phenomenal suit of products that are out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, these carriers have, you know, innovated these products and, and they're great products that are out there for people. But if you're selling it from a point of you're just an insurance agent, I think sometimes it gets a little convoluted for the client sure. and they think that you're just trying to sell them something. But now coming from selling that from a financial advisor's perspective, uh, it, it's been night and day, Ryan. And obviously, you've seen it inside yeah. the office and and, and whatnot. And um, I, I think the biggest thing with that is just being now you're a voice of reason. You're a trusted advisor. Right. So selling that stuff becomes a lot easier. Yeah. And I know a couple of years back, you and I looked at this thing. And we we're like, look, we're in our mid 30s. We're going to be in this thing for a while. You know, obviously, we don't really have any plans to sell this in any time in the near future, right? We got a long career ahead of us. So how do we progressively build it? And like I said, you know, you and I coming from the life insurance, we, well, you and I had that conversation. I remember that sitting around. I think that a lot of people watching should have that conversation, right? Because I think that was a really important part of, of our massive growth that we've gone through is that conversation of what's the next step for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk a lot of in my other videos about the 
uh, running your business in phases. And it took you and I a while to get to this point of running it to this phase of wealth management. We went through, like you said, the life insurance. Then we said, okay, now we're in the big annuity space. We kind of figured that out. You know, got our firm over $20 million a year in annuities on a very short amount of period of time. But this was the next step, right? With taxes, mm-hmm. we got into tax. So people go, why would you, why would you become a tax firm, right? And it's to keep people in front of you. But this is a whole nother step. So I think a lot of you watching this should be having this conversation with yourself because not only does it progress your business, and I think you'll attest this too, but what about the, the DOL ruling that's out there? What about all the changes that could impact our industry? And so many people are going to be unprepared for that. That mm-hmm. was another big reason why we were like, dude, we got to get this. One of us got to get the securities license, right? Because we yeah. need to make sure that if, God forbid, something changed in this industry and we couldn't do the annuities or maybe there, whatever changed with them, we need to be prepared. I think yeah. that that comes with anybody watching this being a step ahead Uh, you know, of any changes that could knock you off course. Because a lot of people that, you know, look at COVID. COVID knocked a lot of people off course that were selling, you know, doing seminars face-to-face, selling annuities face-to-face, and no longer are doing that because of the environment. And it knocked a lot of people out of business last year. Yeah. But I think that's important for progression. So um, have you seen, I know this is kind of similar to a question I asked you earlier, but have you seen your annuity volume go up? because of the assets under management and why is i know you said the trusted advisor but tell us a little about is it the portfolio that you're building so maybe you can kind of walk you know not getting too deep into product stuff but maybe walk through a scenario like if you're building a portfolio why does it make more sense for somebody to have a securities license build a portfolio and have the annuity maybe be a part of it explain that a little bit if you don't mind oh great question so i'll i'll just give you an example i'm well, with the client I have tomorrow. So, um, you know, she has a, a decent amount of money. And, um, you know, typically in the past, before my security days, uh, I have only have made to, you know, been looking to sell her an annuity, right? right? Um, and as you know, with suitability out there, you can't put all of someone's money inside of an annuity. Sure. So let's just say with that client, um, you know, I was trying to sell her a piece of that money that she had into an annuity. Mm-hmm. And then what the client will say to you is, well, what's going to happen with the other piece? <laughs> and Pretty t- common question. <laughs> so, so typically the answer would have been, well, it'll stay with the other guy. Right. Y- y- you know, and, and most people, what you got to understand is that if they're going to deal with you, they, they typically only want to deal with one advisor. Yeah. Uh, so in the past, maybe I might have not sold that because now – I'm talking about her having two advisors, sure. complicates things for her. Most people don't want two advisors. Some people can work with two advisors, but most people don't. Yeah. So, so now let's transition into now, right? So now we can, you know, an annuity is a great product. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a ton of reasons to have annuities. I, you know, I use annuities as a financial advisor, uh, you know, as a piece of someone's portfolio. So, so now it's like, okay, now we can sell her some annuities, which is good for a portfolio, makes sense for her. Yep. And then, but we also can sell her or put her into a portfolio with investments. Sure. So now we can get the whole total piece. And yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is that now you can create a portfolio designed around annuities right. and annuities as a piece of it, instead of annuities just being the sole only main focus. Yeah. Uh, and and plus, especially nowadays too, clients aren't dumb. I mean, they, they, they know, uh, you, you know, how you're licensed and, mm-hmm. the, you know, they know if you're, uh, and that there's nothing that's wrong with being with you know just an insurance agent, but if you are, um, you know there may be some limitations. But you know the thing that we have here is we have a, a total practice where you know we can have the insurance piece, we can have the investment piece, and now with me being securities licensed, uh, and, and you know a financial advisor, Ryan, it's just opened up uh, the ability for me to take cases where maybe I may have not made that person a client before, sure. or I can make them a client because now I can get them. Uh, their total portfolio into one. No, it makes a ton of sense. And, you know, again, I think a lot of people watch this, Brian, are going to go, everybody wants to be in front of high net worth individuals. But Mm -hmm. I think you made a really important point is more than ever, branding is so important because not only is is developing a brand, but people are looking for you, Mm -hmm. right? People are going to look, do you have a website? How many insurance agents that do we know don't even have a website? 
right? And, and so if you're trying to get in front of these high net worth, which everybody wants to, which we figured out how to, everybody's trying to get in front of these high net worth individuals. But if they look you up, what are they going to find? No, that's great. That's great. Yeah. You know, and I mean, even something as simple as your website. I mean, you know, all of your licensure is up there. You know, you broker check, you click on that, brings them right to it. And it gives a whole nother level of validation mm -hmm. of, wow, okay, this guy's the real deal. Mm -hmm. This woman's the real deal. You know, so I think if you're watching this right now and you're listening to what Brian's saying, instead of, and I think it's a really important point though, because what you were just saying is, yeah, you go in and you get a hundred grand, but this person has 400,000, where's the other 300 grand? It also, if you're in, obviously everybody watches in sales, if, if you leave that kind of money on the table, it also, the original advisor is going to put a halt to a lot of those sales, right? How many times have you lost, people watch it, especially if you're going up to annuity, how many times have you lost a sale because the advisor you're taking money away from stomps it down, you know, gives them a reason not to do it. Or mm -hmm. says, I can, now I can, oh, you want annuity? I can do one for you too. And they say, well, I'm gonna stick with this person. Talk about the progression of the holistic plan though, because obviously, you know, all these pieces play a big role, right? Like we just talked about being able to take, you know, at collect all the assets versus just a piece of it. Um, but there's still more to the system, right? It's not, okay, you become a financial advisor, everybody's gonna throw money at you. There's a system that's involved in it. And I think that one of the things that you've done really well is kind of develop that holistic style approach. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that without giving the whole system away, but tell us a little bit about that approach versus two, three years ago, your approach and how it's progressed over the last couple of years and why it's so effective with where you are today. Great question. I, I, I think, Ryan, um, something that I'm really big on is education. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that a lot of us, it doesn't matter if you're an insurance agent or not, just people in general, uh, they tend to forget about that, right? Well, I got my degree in college or whatever. I got my master's or, or, or whatever it is and think that's the end all be all, right? So. Um, in, in whatever profession that you're in, there's always something you can learn. There's always a, a designation you can get, a certification. There's always something that can separate you from competition. So with me, um, you know, I've been huge on that, uh, you know, in, in talking about, you know, a holistic approach. You know, I started, you know, within the past year, you know, really getting myself up to date with estate planning, right? Uh, and, and making sure that, you know, we offer that as a service with inside our practice yeah. because, you know, our big pitch or our big, um, I mean, it's not really even a pitch, it's just the truth is, you know, with our clients is that we do take a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. You know, anything from taxes to estate planning to investments to, you know, uh, annuities to life insurance to long-term care to Medicare, it's mm -hmm. like, what all the reasons do you need to go to someone else right, for? Right, exactly. And we bring everything in house. And the beauty about our practice is that, um, you know, instead of having a client talk to four or five or six different people, because you potentially could talk to one person for each one of those different right. topics, we ha we have that all in house. Now, a question that some people may be thinking that are listening to this is, well. Well, maybe what if I don't want to get into, you, you, you know, being a financial advisor or mm -hmm. doing all these different um, type of services that gives your practice or your personal brand a holistic approach? It's real simple. Just partner with people that do it, yeah. <laughs> right, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, and, you know, and it's like you don't have to be the end all, the answer to everything. I'm not the Love end it. all be all. Right. Ryan's not the end all be right. all. But if you're running an insurance practice and you're like, you know what, I want to kind of stay in my lane only want to deal with insurance, we'll, we'll partner with a financial yeah. advisor, no, partner with an estate planning attorney, partner with a tax professional and have them be a part of your practice. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you're not the end all be all, but you can talk to them and then work with them with your clients so your clients can be fully served. So I think that's yeah. a piece that Honestly, Ryan, if I could have, you know, went back in history, yeah. that's probably what I would have did when I was yeah. heavy in my insurance days is being more of a holistic approach, partner with other professionals. Right. Um, you know, now obviously we've transitioned that to our practice, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, that's just a point I wanted to make with a lot of people that are on this call because they may yeah. not be thinking, well, maybe I don't want to be a financial advisor right. or, you know, have a, a you know, a, a practice like yeah. this, you know? And I think it's a great point. And, and one of the videos I shot a while ago was how to build your financial team. Right. And you and I, over the last couple of years, I mean, even like the CPAs that we have in our firm, they don't work in our office. 
I think a lot of people don't realize that too is, you know, you don't have to have this financial team literally in your office, but having them as a part of your team is so important. And, you know, again, you being in the office makes a big difference for us, but, you know, as you build that team, like Brian said, find someone you trust. Now, the trust factor, that's a whole other story. You know, you, you look at why Brian and I have been able to work together for, for so long is because we absolutely trust each other. And I think that's really difficult in this industry, right, to find it because you get a lot of people come and go, a lot of people stab you in the back. So I would say find somebody you trust because if you're going to build a book of business or refer clients to somebody, you got to make sure that you're in that relationship, that business partnership relationship for the long haul because, you know, last thing you want is to be – sending people over to somebody and they take your book of business and run. Yep. <laughs> That's a problem too. So, and that goes with a whole nother, you know, you got to make sure you have, you know, operations agreements in place, partnership agreements in place, things that protect you legally. That is so important as you build your financial team as well. I mean, that's the, you know, you and I have done that with all the partners that we brought in here yeah. and all the different, you know, uh, people to the professional team. Um, how do you feel differently today about being looked at by your clients versus back in the day when you were the insurance guy what has that done because i mean people listening to this are going okay sounds good you know maybe that'd be something but i know conversation of you and i've had a lot is the way that we're perceived and you hit upon a little bit earlier but how does that make you feel confidence wise what did that do for your overall self-confidence being in this industry now that you have the title of advisor and people look at you. Tell us about that feeling and, and that progression. Yeah, it, it's kind of like a quiet confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and, and, and I think it um, uh, resonates, I guess, is the word I'm looking for when I'm talking with my clients because yeah. uh, before, you know, I was probably fell victim of this and maybe some of you out there do as well as, you, you know, I would – I would almost feel like I needed to sell myself. Yeah. You know, I needed to sell myself and, you know, trust me and, you know, and, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, you know, trust me, you know, I'll do the best I can for you. Where nowadays it's, you know, like Ryan said, it, it, it's when people look up my name, you know, whether it's LinkedIn or it's Facebook mm -hmm. or it's like, you know, Ryan said, broker check, you know, they see that I'm legit, you know, and that's, that's taken time. That's yeah. taken uh, being, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, direct or, or just being intentional. That's the word. Yeah. Being intentional about making sure that anytime my name comes up in a search engine, uh, it's, it's, you know, has something to do with my business. Mm -hmm. So when, because people nowadays it's 2021, yeah. <laughs> people have the internet. I mean, my mm -hmm. grandmother has the internet, <laughs> you know, she's on Facebook. So it's like yeah. people are, are going to find you and, and, you know, they want to make sure that you have good reviews, but if the first thing they pop up and it's you tossing back a 20 pack, it's like, that's probably <laughs> not going to be the, the person they're going to want, you know, handling yeah. their money. Right. Well, I mean, let's just be honest. Right? For real. It, it's like, it, you know, you know, small things like like that or you you know dressed in some skimpy outfit you know on Facebook or Instagram it's just like so do you want to be a professional you know so and and I think with you know with me you know having the fact that um, you know I, I can call myself a fiduciary that's huge in yeah. today's world you know the fact that you know clients you know that's a very common term that they talk about all the time on CNBC which is you know a news channel that a lot of people go to, mm -hmm. you know, for advice and, and, and validity and, and trust. So, you know, being able to call myself that, you know, being able to say that, you know, we have a holistic practice, yeah. uh, you know, we, we can cover seven different areas of your financial plan. Uh, so that way you don't have to go to one single person. So for me, Ryan, it's really just been, I think, what I said initially was, with, you know, just that quiet confidence, you know, being intentional about, uh, making sure that all my stuff online is up to date, it's yeah. legit, um, and and also too, you, you know, with you know these different, you know, LinkedIn or, or or you know whether it's Facebook, just making sure that they're really professional. So when yeah. people go on there and look at it, they see you know that this guy's about his business. Sure, sure, man, I appreciate that, and I know a lot of you watching, you know, you hear us talk about our practice and our firm. Uh, th really, one of the things that I want you to take away is, you know, find a model practice. I think that's important. Like you and I, we didn't 
figure all this out on our own. Let's no. be real. I mean, we've had a lot of help throughout along the way. And one of those pieces of the help that we've gotten is from, you know, one of our mentors, you know, Lee, who runs Megastar. And I think it was really important early on for us to see the model office, right? Because a lot of what we have done, we've modeled around, you know, what we've seen other people do, you know, having it in home, having the tax practice. You know, when you and I met in, in back again back in 2017, we were like, tax practice? I'm not, I'm not doing taxes. I don't want anything to do with taxes. We're selling mortgage protection, right? And then un the understanding of why that is such a valuable piece to a practice. Because again, you keep saying the word high net worth individuals. We're talking about, we regularly work with million dollar plus people. Regularly. So if you're at that level, they're not going to come to you and just buy an annuity. They're going to look you up. They're going to figure out if you're real. They're going to do all their due diligence. And if all you got is one thing in your toolbox, you're not going to win at a very high level like that. And I think no. you and I, we figured that out. We were told that earlier on too. And we're like, okay, taxes, got it. Makes sense why we do that. Let's go become a tax practice. That was kind of the next phase of our business as we entered into you know, that more progressive role. And then you know, last year, this is when we dove head first into the wealth management side of it. And that really, again, took our business because like you said, you got a lot of million dollar clients that are looking at us differently than we were perceived a couple years ago. So you hear us talking a lot about this for all of you guys watching this, but what I would say is number one, find a model office, somebody that is doing what you want to accomplish. We did that. We're not smart to figure all this out on our own, I promise. We're smart people, but to do this on our own, it's never gonna happen, right? So if we can be a model office to you, follow us. We love having people come in and ask questions. Uh, you know, we built the online Level Up Advisors Academy, which talks about all of the stuff that we've gone through over the last, you know, five, six years to become a multi-million dollar firm. And so again, what I think is really important for all of you watching is to really sit down and write out Take some time to think about where do you want your practice to go? Like we call it a firm now, right? Before, we didn't call our, our insurance company a firm. I think that alone is different. Hey, you're now a client of our firm. Mm -hmm. And clients look at that and they perceive that differently. So it is a level of confidence. It takes time to get here. So like, don't think you're watching this and tomorrow you're gonna to become a financial advisor and have all the answers. It didn't work like that. This is a five year progression. Maybe you can do it faster with a lot of the information you're receiving, but, um, but find a model office, somebody that you can really look at and go, these people are doing and are where I wanna be and I wanna model that. So Brian, we'll wrap up with this. If you could go back and make a couple changes. If you could go back to yourself 10 years ago when you're getting into the life insurance industry and final expense, and you could tell yourself a few things, what would they be? Wow, it'd be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the main thing uh, for me was really just um, take, take criticism well. Um, I, I think and that's still something I struggle with, but uh, especially back then is, is, you know, I was not good at taking criticism well. Mm. You know, I'd automatically get defensive, and probably a lot of that was just due to my, um, you know, lack of confidence in maybe whatever I was doing. You know, I, I think I'm able to take it more, a lot better today. Mm. Um, so I would say that just, you know, w when someone's criticizing you, you know, take it constructively. You know, don't take it as it's, it's a sign of weakness. Take it as an area that you can improve from. So that, that, that would be one thing. And then also, um, w which I kind of harped on before, was just always be willing to learn, to, to be a master of your craft, mm -hmm. uh, to be the, you know, whatever you do. Yeah. You, you know, I, I know a lot of the people are on this call today. You're, uh, you know, you're in the insurance business, and maybe you're trying to run a, a multi billion dollar insurance agency it will be the best insurance ag agency that's out there go seek people that have bigger businesses than you you know try not to always be the biggest fish in the room right yeah. you know always be the, the mr know-it-all try to surround yourself with people um that that make more than you that that do better than you that are you know more spiritual than you you know whatever it is i i think for me as well that would be something 
Uh, whereas before, um, you know, in the past, uh, that, that probably wasn't a strong suit of mine. Sure. I always wanted to be the biggest fish in the room, <laughs> you, you know, and not being willing to learn from people that know more than me. So uh, just a few, I mean, if you can just start there, <laughs> I, I think would, you know, probably a lot of you on the call, like, yeah, that's me. So if you could start there, education, seeking people that have bigger businesses than you, yeah. uh, accepting criticism, well, I, I think just those three things right there uh, will help you uh, be more efficient in the work that you do, uh, be more knowledgeable. You get paid for what you know. Uh, so the more that you know, the more that you'll get paid. So I think just those things right there, Ryan. Yeah, um, no, and that's huge. You know, sometimes it's really hard to put your pride in your back pocket. I know I struggled with it early on, man. I was, it was all about me back in the day. I know you yeah. struggled with it too. <laughs> yeah. so, so listen, for everybody watching, again, what I want to make sure you take from this is, yeah, we talked a lot about our firm today, but I wanted you to see it as an example. All right, so find a model firm, some a business like Bryant said that's bigger than you are, somewhere where you want to be. Put your pride in your back pocket and just really open yourself up for other opportunities to see what you can do to progress your business. So, Bryant, thanks so much for being on today, man. It's a pleasure to have you on, a pleasure to be in business with you and our partnership, and we got a long ways ahead of us. But for everybody watching, you know, take this step by step. This is not an overnight success. Things do take time to progress. But take what he said seriously, because if you're in this thing for the long haul, especially for those of you in the insurance world, if you're in this business for the long haul, what can you do to progressively build your business to the next step day by day, year by year? Thanks so much for watching. If you like this, comment below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and like it. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.